Hello everyone, this is Zero J, and I'm here to show you a tutorial of how to draw a solid snake. I've been getting a lot of messages and requests on how to draw the Metal Gear artwork or follow the style of the original artist, Yoji Shinkawa. He's the art director of all the Metal Gear series. I was pretty busy up till now, but I made some time uh, to make this video for you guys, so I hope you enjoyed. This is my first tutorial and commentary, so I hope you guys really forgive me for not being smooth and let's start I always start with the eyes uh, the eyes are really important the eyes are like the main focal point on the face it tells you mood, the mood of the, of the painting and where the character is looking at he can look directly at the viewer or he can look off to the distance and lead, your, lead the viewer's eyes to that point so the eyes are really pretty important so I always start from there even from like little babies, if they look at two dots, they immediately associate them to the human eyes. So that can tell you that the eyes are really important. And after the eyes, I kind of go and follow the forms of the cheekbones, the nose, and the mouth, and the ears, and the forehead. So I always build up from the eyes. As you see, I change brushes. Uh, that's those two are the same same brushes but the one I'm using right now is an older brush and the tip is destroyed the bristle is kind of out of condition but instead of making these clean lines as this new one it creates these um, really dirty looking lines but it has a different line weight and makes different strokes so I kept it and I still refill its ink and keep using it because it makes these different line qualities than the one I have right now. So if you guys ever have um, brushes um, that are out of shape or they're not new, they're kind of destroyed and they're not making these clean lines, still keep on to them. They might uh, make these cool uh, line, work, line works that can really help you in your artwork. So always hold on to them. And for this new one, um, the new brush, uh, when it's always new, it has it makes these clean lines so always kind of take advantage of the tip use you always kind of use the tip and just flow along the paper don't put too much strength on your wrists or your hands or your fingers just let the brush do its thing just let it flow don't try to render stuff just kind of let it loose and like think of it as a contour drawing the original artwork is really really fluent it has a lot of great line works and art, um, line weight that helps everything contain the whole drawing. So you don't have to render everything, you can just indicate stuff and still it would make a perfect drawing. And for these places I put a lot of dark in. Um, it's just indicating that that's part in shadow and that's kind of further away. And for the torso, um, like, you don't really have to, re as you say, um, you don't have to render every part. You just have to indicate, like, the muscles, uh, where the torsos are, uh, where his abs are, where his bones are. And you don't have to render everything out. And you can really just kind of still tell that that part is his torso. It's his abs. Uh, it's his um, belt. Okay, uh, we'll fall, yeah, okay. Some places, um, you need dark places to, you know, give some dark areas that let the eyes focus on. And some places that are really light and smooth and thin, so the line weights has to vary for the viewers to, you know, still have interest in the painting. Like, they can follow all the forms, and if it's the same line weight, it's just going to be like a cartoon drawing. And uh, for the arm, the lower arm part, I didn't do the outline. You don't really have to do every outline either. You can just leave some parts for just the viewers to connect. Um, let the viewers have fun too. Um, make them do their thing. They want to have some fun even looking at a painting. Their eyes can immediately connect one point from another. So don't do every outline. And the right leg, uh, it's closer to us, so I'm putting in more darks because if some if an object is closer to you, it 
has more value. Uh, darkers are darker, um, whites are whiter, so the value range is more wider. And objects that are further from you, they lose the value range and they lose detail. So the, the right leg has more detail and more darks, and it tells you that, um, and I'm not rendering every point. I'm just, just indicating that that's a leg, and it still works. And the left leg is further away. Uh, it's not on the same um, same perspective line grid as uh, the right leg. So I'm just giving it less detail and not as much as dark. And um, right now I'm doing the, the gun. Uh, the gun is a, you know, the, the gun barrel is a cylinder. So you don't have to render everything out, just indicate it. Um, and that turns out to a gun. Well, it might not be a gun for other people, but whoever knows Metal Gear, uh, that's going to be a gun. And now I go back um, with my white. It's uh, it's a white pen, white gel pen, and give back the highlights. Uh, some places are too dark, and and this also has a different line quality than the brush pen. Like the brush pen, it's a really crazy good tool, but it sometimes lacks the solid form sometimes. So you need some the pen always has um almost the same line quality so that really helps out to contain the piece okay uh the first part of this tutorial is ended uh, i'll continue on with the coloring in photoshop on part two i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you guys enjoyed it and this helped you out please like and subscribe because i really want to make more of these videos and it just if it's helpful then uh, I'll try to do as more thank you